Welcome to the Data Cloud Diaries. Today we're going to be diving into Data Cloud Triggered Flows. Really neat things that are now available in your Salesforce core org to access your Data Cloud data. Welcome back to the Data Cloud Diaries. In past videos, I've shown how you can get data from your Data Cloud into your Sales Cloud org. And I've shown how to take data actions, throw a platform event, and then you can have a flow inside of Salesforce Core, catch that platform event and take action on it. But there's something even better that's out there. There are now new data cloud triggered flows. So these are flows that can run in your core org that can detect changes to your data cloud data. So I think it's really neat. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna walk you through an example of how we can get data from data cloud and detect a change and have that change make it into your Salesforce core org. So picking up from our previous most recent video, we have our S3 buckets with our airport level data. And what we're doing is I had created the airport and the region. And we're gonna look at the region. There's just about 3000 regions in our data. And what I'm gonna do is we're gonna take a look at the region and we're gonna take it over to a DMO. We're gonna do this to one-to-one -one mapping. So I'm gonna take my region. I'm going to select the objects. And what I'm gonna do is send this to a custom data model. And I'm gonna mark this as a one-to-one. -one. So we have the objects region, region, and I'm gonna carry over all the fields. So what we're now done is created a DMO which is gonna have all of the region level fields ready to go. Now, what we're gonna be interested in is changes. So we see that we have ID and name. Let's go over to Salesforce core. And what we're gonna do, we're gonna to go to object manager. We're gonna create a new custom object and we're gonna create a core object that will represent the region. And then there's the name. So I have an S object here and we're gonna map name to name, but we're gonna do the external key. So let's create a text field. We're gonna go name to name, but then we're gonna go this to key. We'll make it 50 characters. Save and save. And now what I'm going to do is create a custom tab so I can view the data. So I'm quickly just going to create a region tab in here. So this is going to be region and we'll just uh, pick one. We'll pick the globe and hit next. next and save. So what I now have is an empty region object here in Salesforce and I have the ability in Salesforce core and I have the ability to take a look at it and have my list view just because it's a new object it may take a moment to recover. So there's my regions and all and I have no regions. So our goal is to be able to take changes in data cloud and have them create region objects. So we've got this region mapping. So if I go to my data model and I refresh, you'll see I have region mapped and let's go to data explorer. We're gonna to go to the data model. We're gonna to go to region. And you see that I have all of this region level data already mapped in. And so what we're looking at is let's look at the fields that we're interested in. So we're gonna edit the columns and we are going to just focus in on carrying across two fields. We'll focus in on ID and name. So let's look at these values that we're interested in. So we have ID, which is this numeric, and then we have name of a region. And we're gonna figure out how we can detect a change in data cloud and write that to our new custom S object. So one thing we can do is go to flows and I can create a new flow. 
And here is a really cool, powerful, a data cloud triggered flow. So we're gonna create a data cloud triggered flow. We're gonna choose the region. So now we have the region um, DMO available and we're gonna go a record is created or a record, we'll do just a record is created. So that way we're not gonna create a bunch of duplicates when new records come in. So here's all conditions are met. I'm gonna give it just a blank, you know, ID. I'm, I want all of them. I'll just go e is not equal to ZZ. So this is just a dummy null condition. And then I'm gonna hit save. We're gonna go region create. Now I need to take an action. So I'm gonna put an action here and I'm gonna go create a record. And I'm gonna go, we'll do one record. We're gonna do separate values and we're gonna drop this into my region. So there we are. So what we're gonna be doing is I'm gonna do region and I'll just map the field. So we're gonna go into What I probably need to do is set up the field level mapping, FLS. So from here, I'm taking the key, which was on the read, the new S object. And what I'm gonna be doing is in here, I can read from the record created in the data model. So I'm gonna go here and I'm gonna map the ID. So I have key is my target, my source of record. We're gonna then gonna pull the name. So I'm gonna take the region name and I'm gonna come right here and go to the record and read the name. So I'm gonna be creating a new local object and what I'm gonna be doing is copying two values. And we'll go call this um, create region. So this is just a quick example. I'm not gonna put in all the required fields, hit save. And then we're gonna activate So now I have an active flow detecting a change of region. And what I'm gonna do is make a change to my region data, and I'm going to then load it into S3 and see the consequences. So here's a regions file, and I'm creating a new record with this 400,000, and I'm adding ZZZ and Z name. This will be a new region that I'm adding just as a placeholder. Here I am dragging the regions folder into my S3, adding it to my bucket. So I have brought in a new file into my S3. And now what we're gonna do is we're gonna go to the data streams and we're gonna refresh now. We're gonna refresh only newer files. And this is triggering the refresh. So we had the data stream process. We had the flows where we had the flow creating the data stream, which is gonna be on the region. And now what we're gonna be doing, so here's the flow we created, the data cloud triggered flow, create the region. And then right here, let's go and take a look at the actual region. So we're gonna to go to flows, we're gonna to go to setup, we're gonna to go to region. And in my list view, there is my Z name region in Salesforce core. So this is a new record created by the data cloud admin and it is now created by the flow. So to recap, you can be inside of Salesforce core, you can create a new flow and the flow can be a data cloud triggered flow. And this data cloud triggered flow can read your data space, see your DMOs and take actions like a record is created, a record is edited. So a record is created, edited, and then you can execute flow code and write this into your local core org. So it's getting easier and easier to have your data in your data cloud instance, and then have that be accessible and actionable from within inside your, your uh, 
a core org and it's getting those two orgs data cloud and core and it's getting them closer and closer so you can work you know the actions properly i think it's a really great new feature and you ought to check it out so thank you again for joining fantastic flows join me again same bad time same bad channel and have a great day